what is happening today we're in capitol reef and i thought this would be a great change of pace for some of my videos uh give you a little bit of scenery here but today we are going to be talking about box making for artists i'm going to show you kind of an inexpensive way to make boxes as well as a very durable way and a lightweight way to help you save money on shipping and things so uh, stay tuned we're going to get to box making next and I have to give credit where credit is due. I saw this process on Lori McNee's Instagram and I've kind of taken it to another level as far as construction goes. Uh, so I hope that you enjoy this. I hope you learned something new and thanks to Lori for sharing that because it has changed my shipping life for the better. You will need insulation board that you can pick up over at Home Depot. I got a 4x8 size and it was 33 bucks. You'll also want to get the foam board adhesive. This will just give it extra strength when you're putting your box together. You will also need a caulking gun for this adhesive, so you'll need to pick one of those up. Grab a Sharpie, a box cutter, a cork-backed ruler, and toothpicks. Toothpicks will be really helpful in the construction of your box and to put it together before you commit to gluing it. You'll also need some heavy duty scotch shipping tape. Don't buy the cheap stuff at the shipping stores. You will regret it. Starting out with a box, I create a plan. So I do a rough sketch. Then I do a more detailed sketch with dimensions to try to get the math right so this box will fit my piece of artwork. As you can see, this box was kind of a special box because I'm shipping three paintings in it. Once I have my dimensions, I measure and draw out the shapes on my foam board. Make sure to label each piece because if they're close to the same size, it can start to get confusing. So if each piece is labeled top, bottom, left, what have you, you're good to go. So next, when you're cutting your pieces, this is much like cutting foam core. You will use your box knife and run it along the right hand side of your ruler. This will assist you to have a straight cut and you might have to cut into the foam board a couple of times, but you don't have to cut all the way into it. These boards actually are scored, so if you need to get them into your car, you can break them in half or easily cut them with a box knife to get them into a vehicle. Once you've scored the foam core, all you have to do is find the edge of your table and either press down on the part that's hanging over or karate chop it, and there you go. It's really that easy. I do keep the excess pieces just in case I need to use them for additional padding and shipping, or if I'm painting, sometimes I'll put my panel on top of it so it raises it up a little bit. I try to keep the best pieces that are most even. These toothpicks are fantastic because you can anchor pieces of your box as well as test it out to make sure that it all fits together and I recommend doing this before you ever start gluing. This adhesive is really nice and works really well. It takes 24 hours to dry and about seven days to cure but it's actually a good addition to this so you use less tape. You can smear excess adhesive around with a piece of cardboard. And you can see here, I didn't measure correctly, so I had to improvise here. So I easily just used those toothpicks, adhesive, and a little bit of tape to make it all come together. Here you can see how I also use the adhesive and the toothpicks to put in my separations within the box. What's nice is this really locks them into place and keeps everything nice and tight and together. Here is the finished box. It's pretty ugly. I used adhesive to fill in some of those gaps. So next, of course, you're probably going to protect your artwork. I wrapped my paintings in glassine after I dusted them off. And then if I had additional space, I was going to wrap them again in some sort of bubble wrap or in this instance, I use the inserts that you use for plates when you're moving. Uh, they're inexpensive and I just wrap them around these little paintings. I've heard horror stories of boxes that have wound up in fields, in water, and so this is just an additional way to protect my artwork. We're gonna test to make sure that this fits and it's gonna work in this little box. 
Here you can see all the pieces here within the box. This might be a little bit extra, but I'm not taking any chances with my artwork. And I have a little extra room that I could add a little bit of packing so they won't shift around too much in the box. Lastly, I wrap the box in shipping paper and tape all the corners. Make sure that you don't use cheap tape because you will regret that. It breaks and is not very strong, and if you just pay a little extra for good tape, you will be glad that you did. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I love to share some of the things that I've learned along the way and hope that it helps you out too. Thanks for being here, and I will see you next time. And if you find yourself in southern Utah, check out this beautiful landscape. Uh, we're at Capitol Reef National Park. It's beautiful here, and you should come visit.